morning and welcome back to Sherburne Public Library's Book Talk. This week we're doing some new fiction. So um, Megan's going to go first. We've got about four books for you today. So Megan. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is called Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead, I think is how you say her name. And it starts in 1914 with um, Marion and her twin brother, Jamie. And they're actually on like um, an ocean liner that is sinking. Their father is actually the captain and um, he decides to get into a lifeboat with them to save them. But of course, because he's the captain, he gets arrested for abandoning ship um, and their mother is lost at sea. So they go to live with their uncle in Montana and um, while they're there, Marion meets some pilots that are passing through town and she becomes really interested in planes and flying. But of course, due to the time she's, um, you know, being a woman, she's kind of discouraged from anything having to do with that. So she's really determined. And over the years, she um, she doesn't give up on it. And she uh, ends up taking lessons and becoming a pilot. And so she sets off to um, circumnavigate the globe, very similar to like an Amelia Earhart type of figure. So unfortunately, she does disappear in 1950 in Antarctica and while she's attempting this flight. So um, they do they do talk about other female pilots like Amelia Earhart in this. So um, at the same time, we are seeing another story that's um, in modern time. Um, we were learning about this actress named Hadley, and she's actually been hired to play Marion in a, in a current movie of her life. So the book goes back and forth between um, like the 30s, 40s, and now. Um, and Hadley's trying to sort of change her image as an actress. She wants to be seen as more of a serious actress. And she had recently had a lot of success in a film series based on a book series that I would say is similar to like a Fifty Shades of Grey situation. So she's she's got a lot of publicity, but she's not liking the publicity she's getting. And she doesn't feel like she's being taken seriously as an actress. So she takes on this role to sort of um, change the narrative about who she is as an actress. And she's also getting a lot of misogynistic publicity. And she wants to sort of get away from that. So she really gets into the character and she starts learning more about Marion and, and her story. And then that's where the parallels are sort of come in between their two lives, sort of back starting in 1914 up through 1950. And then now the two women's stories are, they're very different, but there's a lot of parallels that can be drawn. And um, she sort of is finding, you know, just that idea of the misogyny and how, how, how similar, even though they're, you know, technically probably a century apart, how similar their stories could be, I suppose. So it's a really, it's a really interesting um, concept going back and forth between these two different women, but um, they're both sort of determined to make their way and, and uh, figure out who they are. It's, um, it's really interesting. And it's also been um, um, sort of one of those book club I think it was Jenna's book club pick recently so uh, Jenna on the today show so um yeah it's it's been getting a lot of really good publicity wow I love that that it goes that you've got the parallel well it's not parallel but the two time zone time lines basically and and uh <clears throat> and that they've placed her in history um kind of because they mentioned Amelia Earhart I love that kind of historical fiction where they make it seem real because they they're mentioning and putting things, you know, they really place you right into real historical moments. So that's really cool. And I love that. Um, the parallels between the, the ladies uh, finding their way. And that's cool. That sounds good. What's the name of it again? I'm sorry. Great circle. Great circle. Okay. Yep. Wow. That sounds cool. Um. All right. So my first book is called Better Luck Next Time. Now, this is um, by Julia Claiborne Johnson. It's uh, set in 1938 in Reno, Nevada. So at that time, um, women who wanted to get divorced, it was a much more difficult process than it is now. 
but they could go to Reno. And as long as they established residency, as in they lived there for six weeks, they could um, be granted a divorce. They still have to go through the court, but you know, it's pretty much a done deal at that point. Um, so this takes place on this, um, I'll call it a ranch, but I'm not sure it's really a ranch in the traditional sense. Um, it, actually, they describe the house as like a big Victorian house, which is funny because, you know, we always think of Victorian houses as being in, in, the, in the Northeast mostly. Um, but uh, they said that the description was that there were a lot of rich people who came out West and just decided they wanted a, their dream house, which was a Victorian house. And um, so, but it just looked like an alien, you know, like a, a beautiful house in this alien landscape of, you know, just a desert. So anyway, there's this house and um, this is all told from the point of view of a man named Ward. Uh, he's a young man. They describe him kind of as a cowboy, you know, he wears the boots, he's got the hat um, and the bandana and everything. And uh, he works at the, at the house, at this mansion or whatever refuge for women <laughs> and uh you know he picks the women up from the airport he takes them into town when they need to go things like that and he's kind of i think he's attractive to the women and sometimes he i think has had some affairs with some of the women who come there but um it's all told from his point of view so this book starts and it's got there are two other women who are showing up at the that point um i'm trying to remember their names i just nina Nina, she's an heiress and an amateur pilot. And she comes flying in. She really, she's been there like three times. She's a rich divorcee. And then um, there's Emily, who's like this really um, youngish, she's described very young um, girl who's, this is her first time. And she drove herself all the way from San Francisco um, because her husband is cheating on her and she wants a divorce. So there's two very different characters there, but they seem to meet up and, and uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, read on how they, you know, make it through their uh, way to their divorce. Um, and uh, I think there's more to Ward in the story. There's, he's got a backstory that we don't know about yet. And um we're going to find out what that is and that affects it. So it's, it's a very funny book, like the way it's written, it's very funny, but it also is going to have some really poignant moments in it. Of course, you know, really when you get to the underneath of those people and why they're there and how they got there and what led them to these divorce situations. So, so I think it's a, um, I think it's going to be a great book. I, like I said, I've just started it. So um, it, it sounds great. So better luck next time. So I highly recommend that one. I never would have, <laughs> I never would have guessed that that's what that was about. So <laughs> me either. I picked it up because honestly, I loved the cover. This yeah. woman shooting a arrow and it looks like an older, you know, the thirties. And I, and I'm always drawn to the thirties and forties. I don't know. I love that time period, especially when you're talking about Hollywood and stuff. I don't know. And this isn't necessarily Hollywood, but it just gave me that feeling. So yeah, I picked it up because of that. Um, isn't it funny how, uh, you know, covers can really make a difference. Um, but yeah, that's why I picked it up because, and then I was like, oh, I didn't even know this kind of thing existed. Like you said, no, like, me neither. <laughs> I mean, I knew that people used to go to Reno to get divorced or Las Vegas or something I, that sticks in my head as something that used to be a thing. Um, but I didn't realize there were like places women could go and kind of, you know, hide out for six weeks and then get their divorce. <laughs> I don't know. It seems funny. But fortunately, we're not in that situation now. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's your next book, Megan? So uh, the other one I have is called The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. <clears throat> so this is this is such a unique book that is getting a lot of praise. <clears throat> Sorry. So a woman named Sunny. Um, she becomes the first African-American editor of um, a music magazine, sort of like uh, Rolling Stone. And she decides she wants to do this really in-depth um, interview and, and research for a story. It's going to be like her, her first big story. And she decides to um, interview this group and do this story um, from the 70s. And they were called Opal and Nev. They were a rock duo. Opal was black and Nev was white. 
Opal obviously was a woman and Nev was a man. And um, they had teamed up as a rock duo. And basically there was this incident at one of their concerts where another music group, um, I think they were under the same music label or something. And they were like a country, like a Southern group, and they were brandishing a Confederate flag. So Opal was there obviously. And she stepped in and she um, sort of, did something to show her displeasure and she offended the fans of the, the other group. And so this huge fight slash riot breaks out between their fans and the other fans. And there's um, the other fans end up heckling Opal and Nev and it's like a whole thing. And it's actually quite dangerous. And there are people seriously injured and even killed. And we actually find out that the father of the woman, Sonny, who's doing the interview was actually killed at this concert. So she's really interested in this whole thing. And I believe her father also had um, had a relationship with Opal at one point. So anyway, she's really interested in this whole story from the seventies. And um, she really goes in depth with all this research and interviews. She ends up um, interviewing um, obviously Opal and interviews one of the members of the other group that had the Confederate flag. I think she interviews like a receptionist from the record label too. So she does all these different interviews. And what's really cool about this is it's written as an oral history, like the whole book is. And there's been a lot of people not sure if this is an actual group, which it's not. This is a totally made up group from the seventies. It's not a real, but it's like so well done that people are like, is this real? So um, NPR actually noted that the book includes fictional interviews, footnotes, talk show transcripts, letters, and editor's notes. So it really does look like it's like you're reading nonfiction, which you're not. <laughs> so um, Opal is really the main person in this story. And after the riot happened, she and Nev broke up as a group. And he, of course, was able to make it on his own and had a really long and successful career. While Opal was, she was only sort of temporarily successful. So it really goes into sort of that race and gender issue and why why was she not able to sort of come back from this and um never given a chance to really have her voice heard so this is sort of her opportunity she's at the time she's considering doing like a reunion with nev um as a group so this is sort of planned as the beginning of the comeback and like i said it really deals with sort of race and gender in the music industry both back in the seventies and now, and um, the author is also black. So, and she also, I believe the author also has worked as um, a journalist. So that's kind I think that's why this is so well done. You know, even though it's, it's all, you know, fiction, it's, you, you won't know it. You'll read it and you'll be like, this is, this is intense. It's just so um, the backstories of everyone and just everything as if they had been interviewed and done all of these talk shows. It's just, it's really well done. And so um, unique as, as in terms of a book and as the yeah. music industry and all of that, something we don't really see a lot, I think. No, uh, that sounds incredible actually and yeah uh, like it was funny because when you were first starting to talk about it I started thinking wait was this real was there <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh no I guess not but wow yeah uh so much detail then I mean in the sense that yeah. that she did her homework to get this um written um wow yeah I have to look at that one um and what a cool thing to uh have her you know so so you're going back and forth in time then right you're yes. looking at the 70s and then you're looking at what she's doing now to bring that story out wow yeah I bet that would make a very cool movie honestly yeah um, that's it true it's like a movie um but yeah it's funny because this one when I was reading it I kept thinking this would be a really good movie just the way it's written like I could see it so that sounds like a movie too it's funny how some writers write like that, where you can, it's very visual and very, um, I don't know, you can just see it on the big screen, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Cool. I love that. That sounds great. All right. So my uh, second book is, is a book by J.R. Ward, 
who is a writer of um, a series called The Black Dagger Brotherhood. So if you like um, paranormal romance, um, especially vampires, you will love her series. Um, this is her newest in the series called Lover Unveiled. This is number 19 in this series. So if you want to read her series, I really suggest you go back and read, start at the beginning with Dark Lover. It is the best. Um, I, if you hadn't noticed, I love this series. I read this series every, every year the new one comes out and I read it. Um, and it always, always comes out right around my birthday. So it's a great birthday present for me every year. Um, this, um, this one is, let me just say about the J.R. Ward series. It's a, it's a, um, the story is written as, um, it takes place in Caldwell, New York, which is somewhere on the Hudson River uh, downstate. Um, it's a mythical place, obviously, or not mythical, but it's, it's a fictional place. Um, and va these vampires live uh, kind of among the humans. They don't feed on humans. They feed on, they sort of feed on each other. It's kind of a weird thing. And, um, their enemies are these um, undead beings that some evil being has created. So he takes humans and makes them undead, basically. So that's their big um, fight. And the brothers in the brotherhood are, you know, they're your typical alpha male characters. So if you love alpha male, male characters and that kind of stuff. It's, it's great. Honestly, she writes them very well. They're very entertaining. They're funny, but they're also like, um, you know, lethal and deadly serious. And so, and the books are pretty violent and there's some wild, crazy stuff in them. And there's, you know, plenty of sex if that's what you're into. <laughs> um, but they're, 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 um, but they're good. She's they're well written, I think, at least in the beginning. I would suggest the first ten to twelve uh, novels of that book of that series are are really good. I'm I'm getting so she's branching out a little too much for me, but I still enjoy reading them. So, um, so this one is about a character named Savage, who's been uh, he's one of he's not one of the brothers. That's the problem. They've varied. They've they've moved off from the core group of brothers that really make the series interesting and fun but he's another of their kind um you know and it's i'll just read you the 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 inside because that's the best way to describe it savage and they spell savage s-a-h-v-a-g-e that's kind of the way she does a lot of her character names has been living under the radar for centuries and he's he has every intention of staying dead and buried but when a civilian female sucks him into her dangerous battle with an evil as ancient as time, his pr protective side overrides his common sense. So, um, so again, it's, I mean, I, I will enjoy it because I love this kind of uh, romance and this kind of novels and her novels in particular, but, um, but uh, if you don't enjoy paranormal romance, you're not going to care about it. So um so, but I know there's a good number of people out there because she is a, a, a New York Times bestselling author. So there's a lot. She has a huge following. Um, I actually, um, she does her new book release every uh, April, usually uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I got to go out there a few years ago and go to one of her openings and she had her whole talk and she, you know, she spent like, I don't know, half an hour to an hour just talking and answering questions from the hundreds of fans who were there. So it was quite an event. It's quite a bit interesting. She's kind of got cult status going on. So anyway, so that's my second book. Um, and I, so I think that's it, right? We've done, we've done our four. Yep. So um, our next one is going to be in June. It's uh, we're going to, to do books related to Juneteenth. I'm not sure exactly what our, take is on it but we're uh it's in celebration or in not, i don't celebration is not really a good word for juneteenth but um in honor of that day so uh, i don't know if we're doing authors or books based on it or what but that's all we'll be doing and then we'll also have a um pride since june is pride month we'll be doing pride uh something to do to respect and honor pride probably authors books i'm not sure we haven't totally decided. So keep watch for those and uh, 
yeah, and we'll see you hopefully at the library. So thanks for listening. Bye.